This morning on CBS 2 News, tomorrow is election day, the final push from politicians and what to know before you submit your ballot. Plus, the FBI accused of abusing their authority. Why some in the GOP want to have the Bureau of Investigation investigated. Plus, keeping kids warm this winter, what you can do to help keep families in need get through the cold season. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us. This is a live look from downtown Boise on this Monday, November 7th, 2022. I'm Ashley Carter. Yeah, and I'm Sarah Jacobson <laughs> filling in for Vasily Varlamos this morning. And we are tracking a cold front. <laughs> expected to move through. Sorry, I'm no, jumping you're... over you, Ashley. It's a Monday, folks. <laughs> yes, more coffee needed. <laughs> yeah. But that winter weather, I mean, mm -hmm. heading our way, we're uh, yeah. experiencing it. Yep, headed our way. If you are traveling in any mountain valleys, any commuters this morning above the 4,000 foot mark, you will be experiencing some snow. So just give yourself some extra time, maybe a little slushy in the 1,000 feet below that. Here in the Treasure Valley right now, we are awaiting that cold front, 46 degrees. Winds out of the south, just 13 miles an hour this morning. That's why we are seeing a little bit warmer out there. It's because, of course, the system is going to be moving in out of the southwest, bringing in a little bit more temperate air. But as you're stepping out the door this morning, you make sure you're grabbing a rain jacket. You still want to bundle up those kids despite these overnight lows. It will still be chilly as that front moves through. It's going to bring rain, a rain snow mix to our friends around the 4,000 foot mark. The, after that front moves through, we will see clearing to partly cloudy skies. Highs today in the mid to upper 40. So not a bad day by any means. We're just getting through the morning commute with a little wet weather. So this is what we're seeing again, continuing to move in through eastern Oregon as well as the lower Treasure Valley. The upper Treasure Valley, not quite feeling those raindrops yet, but if you are traveling down to the mountain home area or in between Twin Falls, just keep that in mind. We do have low pressure continuing to churn into the region. That's what's causing this system. So again, we are looking at that rain for your morning commute, but a high of 45 degrees clearing behind that and then colder air is pushing in. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long and taking a live look out there. It's looking like a calm Monday morning for your Monday commute. Not too many folks out there starting their day yet, and we are not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you do hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI and that is on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. The midterm elections officially kick off tomorrow. Many races across the U.S. may decide the future of our government. Nationwide, more than 40 million Americans have already voted early in contests that could shift the balance of power in Congress to the Republicans. In a final push over the weekend, President Biden campaigned in New York for Governor Kathy Hochul. This election isn't a referendum, it's a choice. It's a choice between two fundamentally different visions of America. Former President Trump also rallying support for Republican candidates. He made a stop in Miami. You need to vote every Democrat out of office and vote for Republicans up and down the ballot. The former president is also teasing the possibility he may run for the White House in 2024. Meantime, threats to election officials and political violence remain a concern heading into tomorrow. A federal intelligence bulletin recently warned that domestic violent extremists across the ideological spectrum pose a heightened threat. However, they add there are currently no specific threats. And here in Ada County, Election Day polling locations are open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. tomorrow. And if you requested an absentee ballot, be sure to return it by 8 p.m. on Election Day. Now, most Ada County voters were assigned to a new precinct at the beginning of the year following statewide redistricting. If you want to find your polling location or preview your ballot, you can head to the Ada County Elections website, and we have a link to that on IdahoNews.com. Here in Idaho, the Ada County Elections Office already preparing for election security. Last week, the Elections Office conducted tests ahead of the general election. The Public Logic and Accuracy Test runs a set of test ballots with predetermined votes to confirm they're properly read and counted by the software. Then the equipment is put away and secured until Election Day. Polls show it is growing more and more likely Republicans will take control of the White House of, 
or the House of Representatives after the election. Despite strong campaign messages about the economy and inflation, much of what tops their agenda focuses on investigations into President Biden's administration, family and agencies. National correspondent Christine Frizzau gives us a peek at one main focus, the Department of Justice and more specifically, the FBI. The government agency charged with enforcing the law now accused of abusing its authority for political purposes. It's supposed to be equal treatment under the law. That's not happening and we know it's not happening because 14 brave FBI agents came to us as whistleblowers and told us what exactly is going on here. What's going on, according to the highest ranking Republican on the House Judiciary Committee, is laid out in this just released more than 1,000 page report, alleging the FBI is artificially inflating numbers about domestic violent extremism, and that it's investigating parents who spoke out at school board meetings, and that it spied on American citizens, including those associated with the Trump campaign. At headquarters, we've got problems. And we've got problems that I think are going to demand a legislative response and possible uh, restructuring. Charges of politicization at the Department of Justice also occurred under President Trump, including how he tried to get top officials to investigate election fraud, despite no evidence, almost appointing an attorney general he viewed as loyal to him in the final days of his presidency. I said, Mr. President, within... 24, 48, 72 hours, you could have hundreds and hundreds of resignations of the leadership of your entire Justice Department because of your actions. What's that going to say about you? In a statement, the FBI said, put quite simply, we follow the facts without regard for politics, acknowledging while opinions and criticisms come with the job, they will continue to follow the facts wherever they may lead. I'm Christine Frizzau reporting. And back here in Idaho, Zoo Boise is dropping their admission prices for the fall and winter seasons. Daily admission is now $9 for people between the ages of 12 and 61. Kids between 3 and 11 and seniors over the age of 62 cost $6. Children 2 and under are free. For some of the upcoming events at the zoo, you can find a list on IdahoNews.com. And the Salvation Army and Capital Employment Group hosting a holiday hiring event. They need new employees for the holiday red kettlebell ringing campaign. It's the 19th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. You could also win Walmart gift cards or photos with Santa through raffles. We've got all you need to know on our website, IdahoNews.com. And the Boise Hawks are starting their annual winter glove drive. They're collecting the gloves at the Hawks front office at Memorial Stadium Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And that will be through December 2nd. Now you get a general admission ticket to opening night for every pair of new gloves that you bring in. That game is Tuesday, May 23rd against Idaho Falls. And Intermountain Gas Company, the Idaho Steelheads, and Baird's Dry Cleaners are teaming up again this year to help keep kids warm. They're hosting a coat drive and taking donations for energy assistance. The Keep Kids Warm Fund helps low-income families pay for their heating costs. There are several ways to help make an impact. People can donate coats at the Idaho Steelheads ticket office or any of the four Baird's Boise locations. Intermountain Gas Company customers can also pledge each month to make a donation with their gas bill or you can make a one-time donation. To learn more about the drive, head to IdahoNews.com. Oh, I love that, especially with how cold our overnight lows are about to get. Yes, quickly getting to that time of year where coats are essential. Yes, and I, I suppose the good news out of all of this is, of course, our snowpack, at least with these colder temperatures moving in, though we will be cold down here in the Treasure Valley. <laughs> it is some good news. We at least are keeping the snow that is falling up on our snowpack. I should have brought the satellite imagery showing that as well. Actually, I'll do that in just a little bit. But first, let's take a look as you're getting up this morning, maybe yawning, stretching, getting some of your frosted weather wheats ready to go. It is going to be wet this morning as you are heading out the door. We're still are awaiting a cold front expected to bring rain to the Treasure Valley. Snow levels sitting at about 4,500 feet as of this morning. We're sitting at 46 degrees as of 6 a.m. It is going to be breezy as that front moves through. Winds up to 30 miles per hour 
shower possible by 7 a.m. 42 by 8 a.m. 43 degrees. So wet weather just in time for that Monday morning commute. This is what we're seeing on our satellite and radar. It is pushing out of the southwest, so it's bringing a little warmer air into the region. But you can see we've already started to see that rain begin to settle into the lower Treasure Valley as well as eastern Oregon. Again, if you are traveling up to any of our mountain valleys, be ready for slick roads. It is a wintry mix up there to some heavy snow depending on where you are at. We do have a pretty heavy cell about to move through the Caldwell Nampa area, so just be ready for that if you're out on the roads. This is a live look up at Tamarack this morning. They are socked in with patchy fog, so keep that in mind as well. Visibility pretty low out there. So our winter weather advisory, one to three inches possible for our friends you see up there in the blue area. Pink, the pink wind advisory accumulations to two to five inches possible. If you are in the eastern Magic Valley, you do have a chance of seeing those snow levels hitting valley floors as well, so just keep that in mind. Here's a look at the next couple of hours of precipitation. So again, after that cold front moves through, we are looking clear as we push in further into your Monday. This is a look at your hour by hour. Of course, we are going to continue to see that cloud cover, but of course the rain and the snow not sticking around for the entirety of your day, but still going to be a little chilly out there, but I want to show you coming up in just a few minutes. So stick around folks. These overnight lows, very chilly out there. And of course you want to make sure that you are bundling up and prepping, of course, ahead of time because these overnight lows I'm about to show you in your seven day forecast, they are going to be cold folks and we just want to be ready. Of course, the mountains potentially seeing single digit temperatures later on this week, but of course we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Yes, thank you, Sarah. Definitely want to bundle up on your way out mm -hmm. because it's getting cold out there. Yeah, I know. It's going to be a little <laughs> breezy too, so just be ready for that. Thank you, Sarah. Thank CBS you. 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And let's take a live look out there. Still looking like a calm start to your Monday morning. Not too many cars out there and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down on your way out the door. So when you do get in the car, be sure to turn on News Talk KBOI and that is on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And two road closures in CUNA to keep in mind this morning. ACHD says Lake Hazel Road will be closed from Black Hat Road to 10 Mile Road. This closure is expected to last through November 23rd, so keep that in mind. And Linder Road will be closed between Columbia Road and Hubbard Road. This closure is expected to last through November 28th. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, wet weather making its way across the world. How many homes are destroyed in Colombia after hours of heavy rain causes mudslides? Plus, get ready to look at the stars when you can catch the last lunar eclipse until 2025. And it's time now for our question of the day. But first, let's take a look at yesterday's question. 45% of people say this has been the most stressful event in their life. That answer was moving. Definitely can be a stressful thing. Now let's take a look at today's question. A study shows this food is eaten the most between 9 and 11 p.m. What could it be? Happy Monday. Welcome back, folks. It is 515 for our friends in Ontario. Today we are looking at a high of 50 degrees. Even we are looking at morning rain pushing through with clearing behind it overnight tonight. 31 degrees with partly cloudy skies and tomorrow we are looking at evening rain moving in a high of 47 degrees. Thank you, Sarah. Heavy rains in northern Columbia over the weekend causing landslides, destroying at least 70 houses. 82 families are evacuating from the disaster site. The rain also destroying several graves in the local cemetery. The houses collapsed after storms lasted more than 24 hours. And major outages across Nahomish County, Washington are leaving tens of thousands without power and in the cold. A storm knocked out power on Friday and officials say it may still be a few days before the lights come back on. As of this morning, nearly 37,000 homes are still in the dark and our Sinclair sister station in Washington reports they're still working to get power back on for about 12 schools. Wind and blowing snow in Colorado made for a treacherous drive through the mountains over the weekend. Take a look at this. Neighbors planning to go for a hike in the mountains are turning back around. We were supposed to go it was extremely steep and we were like, I don't know, this might be kind of tough. Yeah, because <laughs> there was like a foot of snow there. 
Snowfall also causing delays on freeways and throughout the streets. Many truck drivers moving through the area had no choice but to hunker down and rest at rest areas for a few hours. Even after the snow passed, rain and the wind are now dominating the area, so road conditions are not much better. And we're seeing snow come down in our higher elevations here in Idaho. Take a look at this. Snow is covering Ridge to Rivers trails after the wet weather made its way here last week. For a full photo gallery, head on over to IdahoNews.com. And with wet weather coming to our hiking trails, here's something to keep in mind. Watch out for mud in the foothills. Ridge to Rivers says trails with darker soil like Table Rock, Polecat Loop, Heroes, Hidden Springs, and more are to be avoided to prevent erosion and trail damage. But there are some all-weather trails to use, like in Lower Holes Gulch, the Lower Military Reserve, Chief Eagle Eye Reserve, and Harrison Hollow. We've got a full list of trails to avoid and that you can use on our website, IdahoNews.com. And Tuesday will be the last chance to see a total lunar eclipse until 2025, but you'll have to get, get up pretty early to catch it. You'll be able to see the moon eclipse across the U.S. from about 3.16 a.m. to 4.41 a.m. our time. The moon will have a reddish brown look from the light of Earth sunsets and sunrises. You can also watch a live stream through the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. And if you don't get to see it, there will still be plenty of partial lunar eclipses before 2025. I know, socked in by clouds right now. Some areas you may be able to see just a little peak of it this mm -hmm. morning, but because of this front moving through, it's kind of keeping us a little bit low on that visibility track. Yeah, and definitely, I mean, colder weather moved in pretty quickly. Mm -hmm, definitely, yeah. and you're going to feel the wind <laughs> when you head out this morning. Still awaiting that cold front, so if you're heading out right about now, it's looking good. Just be ready for that, especially if you are traveling from Boise down to the mountain home area. We want two hands on the wheel. It will be breezy in that area, but a look outside right now. We do have snow falling up on our mountains. We are seeing snow levels at 4,500 feet as of this morning, though we are looking pretty clear out there this morning. This is a look at our satellite and radar. Here's um, again the green showing you where the rain is falling a little heavier rain in those yellow pockets. Of course, the blue is where we are seeing snow this morning. Snow level sitting high at 4,500 feet. Again, this is pushing out of the southwest. That's why these overnight lows a little warmer than average for this time of the year. And of course, why we are seeing those snow levels sitting high. So a look a little closer to home. This is what we're seeing as you're heading out the door this morning. A nice pocket pushing just north of the Caldwell Nampa area this morning all because of low pressure, right? Oh, whoops, a little closer now <laughs> off to the coast. This is very slow moving. It's going to continue to push through and help churn that moisture in. The good news, though, after this front pushes through, we will see clearing for the Treasure Valley. Going to continue to see some snow falling up in our northern mountains. So here's a look at our chances for snowfall today. Again, staying fairly low, but if you are going to be traveling up north, just keep in mind you will be encountering wet and slick road. So our chance of precipitation looking good. This front pushing through. We're going to see a lull in activity after that. Another system late Tuesday into Wednesday before that cold Arctic air begins to move on in. So here's a look at our precipitation chances over the next 48 hours. Again, best chance for us will be over the next two to three hours. Again, as that front pushes through after that, we see clearing here in the Treasure Valley. It's going to continue for Twin Falls and our friends up in our northern mountains. Here's a look at that seven day forecast. Just note the overnight lows are going to get cold. Let's take a quick peek at the mountains as well, because they have a chance at single digit overnight lows later on this week. Quickly getting very cold. Yep, just want to keep you guys set up so you know yes. what's heading your way. Yes. Again, if you don't have everything ready to go for your winter, if you're up north, just make sure you're getting those preparations set. And that chance of rain, definitely something to keep in mind as you head out for your morning commute. Yes, not only will it be a little wet, but it will be a little breezy as well. Thank you, Sarah. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long and taking a live look out there. Starting to see some more folks out there, but still looking pretty calm this Monday morning and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. So when you do hop in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI and that's on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, if the election has stressed you out, don't worry, you're not alone. Some ways to help you control election stress disorder. Plus, treating long COVID, the medicine already treating the virus that may help with its after effects.
This is CBS 2 News This Morning. The midterm elections are here and many more Americans are reporting significant related stress. Bradley Blackburn has more on what some experts refer to as election stress disorder. In this current political climate, so many are feeling anxious about election day. It's more divisive. We live in turbulent times. I'm nervous about the democracy in our country. Some experts refer to it as election stress disorder. Mayo Clinic psychiatrist Dr. Robert Bright says it's not an actual medical diagnosis, but experiencing higher levels of stress and anxiety during election cycles can be real for some. Difficulty getting to sleep or waking up early and not being able to let go of of that. Um, For some people, they experience it physically. They may have GI upset or headaches or just feel shaky not be able to relax, not be able to concentrate. A recent survey from the American Psychological Association shows two-thirds of adults say the current political climate is a significant source of stress in their lives. More than three-quarters are stressed about the future of our nation. Social media, as well as media in general, can really generate stress and anxiety around the election. So for some people, they're really focused all the time in a very concentrated way on news story and news events and living moment to moment of what's going to happen next. Dr. Bright says election stress also comes from the feeling of not being in control. That's why it's important to control what you can. Make sure you're getting enough sleep and exercise. Do some relaxation techniques and connect with friends and loved ones that support you. I'm going to vote. I'll pick somebody. I'm not stressed about it. How do you stay so calm? I just try to focus on the important parts of life. And Dr. Bright says another thing in your control, casting your vote on Election Day. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. And if that stress is getting to your heart, you may need to do more than just take some heart-healthy supplements. A new study in the American Journal of Cardiology finds the six most commonly used over-the-counter supplements for heart health do not help lower your cholesterol. Supplements like fish oil, Garlic, cinnamon, turmeric, red yeast rice, and plant sterols failed when tested in a side-by-side comparison with a statin medication and a placebo. Only the statin prescription medication actually reduced cholesterol by a significant amount. And a new study offers some hope for a treatment of long COVID. AVA Health System study showed Paxlovid, which is already used to reduce the risk of death and hospitalization from COVID-19, also seems to reduce the risk of long COVID. A study of 9,000 veterans who took Paxlovid within the first five days of their coronavirus infection showed a 26% reduced risk of developing several long COVID conditions. Those include heart disease, blood disorders, fatigue, muscle pain, and shortness of breath, among others. Coming up on CBS2 News, Powerball's largest jackpot ever How much is up for grabs after another night of no winners? And of course, here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS2. After all your favorites, be sure to join us right back here for CBS2 News at 10 p.m. And here's a look at our question of the day. We'll be sure to read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, tomorrow is Election Day. An early voting push already has Republicans in some states at an early lead, while some Democrats are pointing fingers at their own party. Plus, concerns ahead of midterms, why officials are worried about the impact it may have, even after the voting is over. And keeping kids warm this winter, what you can do to help families in need through the cold season. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Well, hey, folks, it is 530 on your Monday. We are tracking a cold front expected to move through the Treasure Valley just in time for your commute. It's about 30 minutes out from hitting the Ontario area, currently making its way through eastern Oregon. 
Here in Boise right now, though, we are sitting at 46 degrees. A live look downtown. Winds out of the south at just 13 miles an hour. We are expecting to see breezy winds with the passage of this cold front. Not as much precipitation along the front as we originally saw. But if you are heading out the door, make sure you grab that rain jacket because it will be pushing through just in time for that commute. So right now we are sitting at 46 degrees in the Boise area. We are expected to cool into the morning, of course, just in time for that cold front. By 9 a.m., 42 degrees, getting up to mid to upper 40s for your daytime high. After that front pushes through, we will start to see clearing to partly cloudy skies today. It is expected to be a beautiful day, a little warmer than average, all because of this system that's again moving out of the southwest. That's what's bringing in a little bit warmer air, keeping those snow levels high at 4,500 feet. So if you are traveling to our mountain valleys, keep in mind you may encounter some slick roads, all because of this low pressure system continuing to slowly churn its way inward to the inland northwest. Of course, after that front passes, we will see clearing. So let's take a look at your adventure cast. We are looking at a high of 45 today, but overnight tonight it is going to get chilly. The good news tomorrow's high is similar to today with a high of 46 degrees. We'll talk much more about this system pushing through and what our friends in the mountains can expect coming up in just a few minutes. Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long and still looking quiet out there. Not too many headlights on the road and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down when you get going this morning. So when you do get in the car and start your day, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Many of the polls ahead of Tuesday's midterm election show tight races and no definitive answers on who will be in the majority in the House or Senate. But the momentum these last few weeks has largely been with the Republicans which has prompted some Democrats to already start playing the blame game. As national correspondent Christine Perzow reports, they're largely pointing fingers at those inside their own party. <laughs> With early voting now wrapped up in many parts of the country, a quiet calm before what many Democrats predict will be a savage storm. I am not happy. I just think that we are, you know, we did not listen to voters in this election and I think we're going to have a bad night. While polls show tight races for several swing state Senate seats, they were races dominated by Democrats until a few months ago. A new ABC News Washington Post poll revealing top issues for likely voters could help Republicans trusted to handle the economy, inflation and crime by double digit margins. We're getting crushed on narrative. We're going to have to do better. Democrats time and time again blaming not what has been done, but what's been said and not said by fellow Democrats. They became inflation deniers, and, and that really, I think, is a stupid strategy. Even President Biden, a target of blame for these comments he made on coal. We're going to be shutting these plants down all across America and having wind and solar. West Virginia Democrat Joe Manchin responding in a press release that President Biden's comments ignore the severe economic pain the American people are feeling because of rising energy costs. But some Democrats are expressing optimism, not only about their party's accomplishments, but also its messaging on issues they say matter most. I know what their closing argument is, is that when this country is going through tough times, whether it's a pandemic or inflation rising, who is really going to have your family's back? Others hoping the issues they have campaigned on, like abortion rights and defending America's democracy, will resonate. We're not perfect, but we are responsible adults who didn't attack the Capitol on January 6th, didn't try to whitewash it. Don't pretend we're for, we're for law enforcement and then ignore 140 cops getting beat up on that horrible day. The focus now on Election Day. Many Democrats already rethinking their political strategy for the future. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. And threats to election officials and political violence remain a concern heading into tomorrow. A federal intelligence bulletin recently warned that domestic violent extremists across the ideological spectrum pose a heightened threat to the midterms and beyond the election day, though there are currently no specific threats. And here in Ada County, election day polling locations are open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. tomorrow. And if you requested an absentee ballot, be sure to return it by 8 p.m. on Election Day. Most Ada County voters were assigned to a new per voting precinct at the beginning of the year. That was following statewide redistricting. 
So if you want to find your polling location or preview your ballot, you can head to the Ada County Elections website, and we do have a link to that on IdahoNews.com. Zoo Boise is dropping their admission prices for the fall and winter seasons. Daily admission is now $9 for people between the ages of 12 and 61, kids between the ages of 3 and 11, and seniors over the age of 62 will cost $6. Children under 2 are free. For some of the upcoming events at the zoo, you can find a list on IdahoNews.com. The Salvation Army and Capital Employment Group are hosting a holiday hiring event. They need new volunteers for the holiday red kettlebell ringing campaign. It's the 19th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. You could also win Walmart gift cards or photos with Santa through raffles at that event. We've got all you need to know on our website, IdahoNews.com. And the Boise Hawks are starting their annual winter glove drive. They're collecting the gloves at the Hawks front office at Memorial Stadium Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And that will be through December 2nd. You get a general admission ticket to opening night for every pair of new gloves you bring in. And that game is on Tuesday, May 23rd against Idaho Falls. And Intermountain Gas Company, the Idaho Steelheads, and Baird's Dry Cleaners are teaming up once again this year to help keep kids warm. They're hosting a coat drive and taking donations for energy assistance. The Keep Kids Warm Fund helps low-income families pay for their heating costs. There are several ways to help make an impact. People can donate coats at the Idaho Steelheads ticket office or any of the four Baird's Boise locations. Intermountain Gas Company customers can also pledge each month with a donation to their gas bill, or you can make a one-time donation. To learn more about the drive, head to IdahoNews.com. Love that. And definitely with these cold overnight temperatures heading our way, I think it's a yes. great time to begin starting some of those initiatives yes. already. Yes, coats are essential. That heating is essential because yeah. it's getting really chilly out there. Yeah, no, especially <laughs> when you guys see this seven day forecast yeah. coming your way. <laughs> Get ready, especially if you are up in the mountains, potential for single digits. But I do want to remind you that normally Boise, our average time for seeing snowfall is about November 19th. So okay. while we did already see a dusting, that's our official for this time of the year. That's at least on average what we're looking at. So oh, okay. A good thing to keep good in thing, mind. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> as you're thinking about that, let's get out those frosted <laughs> weather weeds. Take a look at what you can expect as you're heading out the door this morning because we are waiting. A cold front expected to move through in Ontario in the next 30 minutes, not hitting us in the Boise area till around 8 a.m. But that is expected to bring some wet weather for your morning commute as well as some breezy conditions as that front moves through. Not expecting a lot of rain, but it will rocket through pretty quick. So 6 a.m. 46 degrees by 7 a.m. We are looking at 42 and then getting to 8 a.m. 43 degrees. Of course, we are looking at that rain pushing through. If you are above 4,500 feet, you can expect snow to be falling. So again, if you are commuting in our northern mountain valleys, any type of summit, make sure you keep in mind it will be slick and snowy out there. Our clouds and radar right now seeing the system continuing to push out of the southwest. We are seeing a little bit of that rain shadow effect off of the Hawaii. So if you are in the lower Treasure Valley staying dry right now, of course, the gray, green means rain on our satellite. That could be the reason, of course. We do have the Owyhees um, kind of blocking for some of those in the lower Treasure Valley, though we are still expecting that rain to move on through. Again, a look a little closer to home as we see a little bit heavier with cell pushing through the Caldwell Nampa area. But again, uh, look up at Tamarack this morning. They are seeing snow falling, and that's really the good news from all of these systems pushing through. This cold air that's going to be pushing in for our seven day forecast, going to help keep that snow atop our mountains. So, all of our weather advisories, at least for our viewing area, are looking good. Here's a look if you're on the eastern side of the state. A chance for some more accumulations with this system. Our precipitation chances looking, again, tapering off after this system moves through. But our forecast today, we will see a little bit of sunshine later today. But of course, just getting through a little wet weather and a little wind on this morning commute. And that wet weather and wind, definitely something to keep in mind. Yeah, out I on suppose. the road. Yes. Yes, especially yeah. if you are going to be traveling. Um, a friend's Boise to Mountain Home. We've got two hands on the wheel. Just keeping that in mind as that cold front moves through, it's going to be a little breezy. Very important reminders. Thank you, Sarah. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And taking a look out there, still looking quiet and calm this morning. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down. And as you can see, traffic is moving nicely out there. So when you do hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI 
That's on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more teen traffic updates. And time now for our question of the day. That question is, let's take a look here. Well, let's take a look at our answers. Most commonly eaten foods between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. Oh, Sarah. Jed with the popcorn, yes. That's that what, was what one of my, my favorites, first guesses. That's why. Yes. <laughs> you know, I was kind of stuck between popcorn and ice cream. Yeah. Kind of my oh, two gosh. favorites to eat during those hours. I mean, they do complement one another. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, let's see what folks have to say. Anybody else with a sweet tooth out there? Oh, Doug says leftovers. leftovers. That is kind of the time where leftovers, you know, you're maybe sitting on the couch or laying in bed and you're like, you know. I like Doug's family, they eat their leftovers. I'm working on that with <laughs> mine, guys. I need, your, I need your hints and your tips, Doug. Melissa says candy. Candy, also a great answer. <laughs> also something <laughs> love to eat during those hours. Yeah. Have you ever put candy in your popcorn? Ooh, yes I have, and it is good, especially if you do M&Ms. Yes, my see lots of yummy things that we could combine mm -hmm. <laughs> between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. <laughs> well, if you think you know the answer, be sure to share your guesses on Facebook or Twitter. We'll read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show, right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News This Morning, inflation may make shopping this holiday season tough. A look at some of the best discounts and deals coming this month. Happy Monday, 544 folks. Down in Mountain Home, we are looking at a high of 45 degrees today. They will see morning rain pushing through, moving to partly cloudy skies. Overnight tonight, a chance of a wintry mix moving through, leading to rain tomorrow with a high of 46. Thank you, Sarah. Rental housing in Boise seeing relief over October. According to the apartmentlist.com, Boise had the number one rental cost decline month to month, falling 3.5% from September. They report the median rent for a Boise one bedroom is $1,118, and a two bedroom is costing a bit over $1,300. Apartment list shows October as the city's fourth straight month of decline. Boise's two bedroom median cost is just under the national median at about $1,350. And if you're shocked by price tags on nearly everything recently, you aren't alone. Consumer Reports found deals on some of its top tested items to help kickstart your holiday shopping season and help save you some money. Our very own Seth Chilcutt reports. If you like discounts, then your favorite month of the year should be November. From TVs to vacuum cleaners to coffee makers, there are deals across the board this month, just in time for the holiday shopping madness. Consumer Reports tracks the prices of many of its top tested products all year long, so it knows exactly when they go on deep discount. Here are some top products to look out for in this month's best time to buy. Tech products are gonna be at their deepest discounts on Thanksgiving, but if you're looking for a TV, wait until Black Friday when they'll see their biggest deals. And keep in mind that sale prices will be fluctuating all month long, so if you see a good deal, grab it. This Samsung OLED 4K UHD TV is Consumer Reports top rated 65 inch TV and is currently on sale for $1,997.99 at ABT Electronics and Amazon. Consumer Reports says this 4K OLED smart TV is one of the best it's ever tested. Next, surprise a coffee lover with a better coffee house style brew. This Ninja Specialty Coffee Maker is a Consumer Reports recommended model and is currently $169.99 at Amazon and Best Buy. And even if it's cold outside, you can heat things up with a wood-fired outdoor pizza oven. The Geiber Fremont 29-inch wood-fired pizza oven is now on sale for $2.54 at Lowe's. Consumer Reports says this wood pellet heated outdoor pizza oven holds a slightly larger pizza of about 13 inches than the other wood-fired options. If certain types of earbuds are breaking the budget this year, Consumer Reports says you can find others offering great sound quality for a fraction of the price. These Audio-Technica wireless earbuds are a Consumer Report Best Buy and are currently $79 at Amazon. And finally, if you plan on hosting for the holidays, save big now on keeping your home clean. The Eufy 11S Vacuum Cleaner is a Consumer Reports Best Buy and is now $149.99 at Amazon. Consumer Reports says this affordable RoboVac was great at navigating its specially designed test area. And the Eufy is also one of the quieter models it's tested. Saving money goes a long way in helping have a stress-free holiday. For CBS2's Consumer Reports, I'm Seth Chilcutt. 
Well, if you're thinking about buying the new iPhone 14 for the holidays, you could be waiting longer than usual to get it. Apple says a COVID-19 outbreak at a factory in China has impacted production, which will lead to lower shipments than anticipated. The company says it is working to return to normal production levels at the facility while protecting the safety of every worker. And just days after Twitter began mass layoffs, the Wall Street Journal reports Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, is also planning larger scale layoffs as soon as this week. The layoffs could affect thousands of jobs and would be the first large scale production or reduction in the company's 18 year history. A company spokesman refused to comment on the report, but pointed to founder Mark Zuckerberg's recent comments that some teams will grow while others would either stay flat or shrink in the next year. And Elon Musk is warning users they will be permanently banned from Twitter if they impersonate other users. It comes after some celebrities changed their Twitter display names and tweeted as Musk. They were responding to a new $8 monthly fee to keep their verified identities on the platform. Musk says any Twitter handle that engages in impersonation will be booted off the site immediately without warning. He says a name change of any kind will result in a temporary suspension. And Powerball's largest ever jackpot just keeps growing ahead of today's drawing. It's close to an estimated $2 billion after there was no winning ticket Saturday night. Those are some of the day's top stories. Almost two billion dollars. Yeah. That <laughs> is just. <laughs> I don't know how it can keep growing. My jaw just drops every time I check and see how much it's grown to. Well, if every time you tune in, you, you know, you, you think you're going to hear some winning, yes. you know, be able yeah. to celebrate. Hopefully someone, maybe they'll keep their identity, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. at the same time, just nothing. I know. Maybe I, tonight will be the. Maybe some hope for people out there <laughs> at home. I mean, hey, we'll take it. Yeah. I mean, it's. It's amazing to see how much this has yeah. really grown to and also kind of amazing to see our weather that's moving in. Oh yeah, guys, let's <laughs> let's start with that. Let's uh, take a look outside this morning because right now we are seeing different conditions depending on where you are. That's as we are awaiting a cold front expected to move into the region, not hitting Ontario, Oregon until around 6 a.m. So we have about 10 more minutes until we are expecting to start to see that move through. We are already seeing some snow falling in our northern mountain zones here in Boise, though. We are looking clear at the moment, but as you can see from our satellite and radar, we do have that cold front pushing in out of the southwest, bringing in a little bit warmer overnight lows. Again, that's why snow level staying so high at 4,500 feet right now. Keep that in mind if you are going to be commuting in our northern mountain areas. Of course, already seeing slick roads out there, but again, you're going to want to grab that range jacket as you are heading out the door this morning. Again, as that cold front moves through, we aren't seeing a lot of rain with the system, but it will be windy as you're heading out the door. You just don't want to forget that rain jacket, folks. It's all because of low pressure just off the Pacific. It's continuing to slowly churn. Note that counterclockwise motion continuing to bring in that wet weather out of the southwest and after that system moves through, we're going to see a switch from the northwest and that's going to bring in much colder air, folks. So our snow depth with this next system moving through again, that cold front expected to bring some good net snow to our friends in the Sun Valley area. Not so much to our friends up in McCall, but be ready to drive in wintry conditions. Likely rain moving through with that system. We'll see a lull Monday night into Tuesday morning. Another system pushing through Tuesday into Wednesday as those snow levels start to lower. For us here, though, we do, of course, have the rain's shadow effect off of the Owyhees. So keep that in mind if you are in the lower Treasure Valley this morning. But already seeing some of that wet weather falling as we're looking out the door on our traffic cam. So again, just be ready. A peak for you at our seven day forecast, a high of 49 degrees today. But note those overnight lows getting much colder day by day. Definitely that rain, something to keep in mind, both for grabbing mm. a jacket and like we can see on our roads, yeah. they're starting to starting to get wet. Oh, yep. so. You can see the wind too, a little bit of that movement. <laughs> oh, yep. Here we go. So definitely probably leave a little bit earlier. Give yourself some extra time this morning. Thank you, Sarah. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI give you team traffic all morning long. And taking a live look out there, like Sarah and I were just talking about, you can see some of that rain coming down over in the I-84 Orchard area and that wind is blowing. We could see that camera moving at the I-84 10 mile view. So there are not any incidents or reports that should be slowing you down this morning, but just keep that weather in mind. Maybe leaving a little bit earlier, give yourself some extra time to get to your destination safely. 
And when you do hop in the car, be sure to turn on News Talk KBOI. That's on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Boise State loses to BYU over the weekend. A look at where they're headed next and when you can head to their next home game. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Well, Boise State defeated by BYU over the weekend. The Cougars defeated the Broncos by a score of 31-28. to It was a back-and-forth battle all night long with a ruckus crowd at Albertson Stadium. Boise State now heads to Nevada for their next game against the Wolfpack. That will be at 8.30 this Saturday. It airs on the CBS Sports Network. The next home game will be November 25th, the day after Thanksgiving, and that will be against Utah State. Tom Brady is the first NFL quarterback in NFL history to reach 100,000 career passing yards. The record was set during the fourth quarter of the Rams-Bucks game. The next closest to the 100,000 mark was Drew Brees at 85,724 yards. And today, the Houston Astros will celebrate their World Series victory with a parade. The Astros beat the Philadelphia Phillies thanks to a monumental three-run homer in Saturday night's Game 6. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, getting ready for Election Day when you need to submit your vote. Plus, get ready to look at the stars when you can catch the latest or the last lunar eclipse until 2025. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day long on IdahoNews.com. And we'll be back with your top local stories and weather updates at the top of the hour. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, tomorrow is Election Day, the final push from politicians and what you need to know before you submit your ballot. Plus, the FBI accused of abusing their authority why some in the GOP want to have the Bureau of Investigation investigated. Plus, keeping kids warm this winter, what you can do to help families in need get through the cold season. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us on this Monday morning. This is a live look from downtown Boise on this November 7th. 2022 and a cold start to our Monday morning. Yeah, no, even in the just the last 15 minutes. Good morning, folks, by the way, we're <laughs> tracking a cold front and it did just push through. We saw about a six degree cool down within a span of just 15 minutes there as that rain begins to roll through. So folks at home, if you are going to be heading out soon, just keep that in mind. You want to make sure you bring your rain jacket as you are heading out this morning. It is going to be a little breezy as well. Keep that in mind, too, for our friends traveling down into the mountain home area from the Treasure Valley. So 40 degrees right now. We are seeing rain falling winds out of the west at 21 miles an hour as we begin to see the start of this front pushing through. So as you're heading out the door this morning, it will be chilly and windy. But after that front pushes through and around the 9 to 10 o'clock hour, we will start to see some clearing to partly cloudy skies. May see a little bit of sunshine today, but 42 at 9 a.m. We are getting up into the mid to upper 40s for your daytime high today. Again, looking after that rain moves through just partly cloudy skies. Our snow levels, though, sitting high because the system continues to push out of the southwest. That's what's giving us our warmer over overnight lows and keeping our snow levels at 4,500 feet for your morning commute. So keep that in mind if you are going to be commuting in those northern mountain valleys already beginning to see some of that snow falling in the west central mountains and the long valley. If you are down in the Twin Falls area, you also will be dodging raindrops 
as that low pressure continues to move inland. So today, 45 for the high. Overnight low is going to be cooling, though, as we start to see some northwesterly flow push through. And then by tomorrow, looking at 46 for the daytime high. We'll talk a little more about this cold front. Who can expect how much snow? Because it is helping our snowpack out a little bit. And we have much more coming up in just a few minutes. Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI. We're being we bring you team traffic all morning long. And as you can see, like Sarah mentioned, there is some rain coming down. You can see in that I-84 orchard camera showers. The roads will be wet and like she mentioned, there will be some wind this morning. So some important things to keep in mind on your morning commute. We do have initial reports of a traffic collision on eastbound I-84 at Broadway in Boise. So if that is along your morning commute, keep that in mind. Maybe leave a few minutes earlier and we will keep you updated on that throughout the morning. And when you do hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI and that's on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. The midterm elections officially kick off tomorrow. Many races across the U.S. may decide the future of our government. Nationwide, more than 40 million Americans have already voted early in contests that could shift the balance of power in Congress to Republicans. In a final push over the weekend, President Biden campaigned in New York for Governor Kathy Hochul. This election isn't a referendum, it's a choice. It's a choice between two fundamentally different visions of America. Former President Trump also rallying support for Republican candidates. He made a stop in Miami. You need to vote every Democrat out of office and vote for Republicans up and down the ballot. The former president is also teasing the possibility he may run for the White House in 2024. Meantime, threats to election officials and political violence remain a concern heading into tomorrow. A federal intelligence bulletin recently warned that domestic violent extremists across the ideological spectrum pose a heightened threat. However, they add there are no, no current specific threats. And here in Ada County, Election Day polling locations are open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. tomorrow. And if you requested an absentee ballot, be sure to return it by 8 p.m. on Election Day. Now, most Ada County voters were assigned to a new pr voting precinct at the beginning of the year following statewide redistricting. If you want to find your polling location or preview your ballot, you can head to the Ada County Elections website. We have a link to that on IdahoNews.com. Polls show it is growing more and more likely Republicans will take control of the House of Representatives after the election. Despite strong campaign messages about the economy and inflation, much of what tops their agenda focuses on investigations into President Biden's administration, family and agencies. National correspondent Christine Frazau gives us a peek at one main focus, the Department of Justice and more specifically the FBI. The government agency charged with enforcing the law now accused of abusing its authority for political purposes. It's supposed to be equal treatment under the law. That's not happening and we know it's not happening because 14 brave FBI agents came to us as whistleblowers and told us what exactly is going on here. What's going on, according to the highest ranking Republican on the House Judiciary Committee, is laid out in this just released more than 1,000 page report, alleging the FBI is artificially inflating numbers about domestic violent extremism, and that it's investigating parents who spoke out at school board meetings, and that it spied on American citizens, including those associated with the Trump campaign. At headquarters, we've got problems. And we've got problems that I think are going to demand a legislative response and possible uh, restructuring. Charges of politicization at the Department of Justice also occurred under President Trump, including how he tried to get top officials to investigate election fraud, despite no evidence, almost appointing an attorney general he viewed as loyal to him in the final days of his presidency. I said, Mr. President, within 24, 48, 72 hours, you could have hundreds and hundreds of resignations of the leadership of your entire Justice Department because of your actions. What's that going to say about you? In a statement, the FBI said, put quite simply, we follow the facts without regard for politics, acknowledging while opinions and criticisms come with the job, they will continue to follow the facts wherever they may lead. I'm Christine Frazau reporting. Well, back here in Idaho, Zoo Boise is dropping their admission prices for the fall and winter seasons. 
Daily admission is now $9 for people between the ages of 12 and 61. Kids between 3 and 11 and seniors over the age of 62 cost $6. Children 2 and under are free. For some of the upcoming events at the zoo, you can find a list on IdahoNews.com. The Boise Hawks are starting their annual winter glove drive. They're collecting the gloves at the Hawks front office at Memorial Stadium Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And that will be through December 2nd. Now you get a general admission ticket to opening night for every pair of new gloves that you bring in. And that game is on Tuesday, May 23rd against Idaho Falls. And Intermountain Gas Company, the Idaho Steelheads, and Baird's Dry Cleaners are teaming up again this year to help keep kids warm. The Keep Kids Warm Fund helps low-income families pay for their heating costs. Now there are several ways to help make an impact. People can donate coats at the Idaho Steelheads ticket office or any of the four Baird's Boise locations. The Intermountain Gas Company customers can also pledge each month to make a donation with their gas bill. To learn more about the drive, you can head on over to IdahoNews.com. Yep, it is that time of the year, and at least over the next week, we're going to have a lot colder air starting to move in. So actually the perfect time for all of that. To yes, begin. and like you mentioned earlier, just this morning, we're seeing that yeah. cold weather. I mean, move in, well, I should say colder weather. Colder, <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Definitely not, not what yeah. we're used to yeah. right now. You're going to want to grab a jacket as you're heading out the door this morning. Let's take a look at those frosted weather weeds for your forecast because it is going to be a wet commute today depending on where you live. We are seeing uh, rain falling due to a cold front moving through the region right on time, but that may net some wet weather for you. Of course, because of this system, we are seeing it is cooler air, but still a little bit warmer than those average highs for the year. That's what's keeping our snow levels at least a little bit higher than average. We're at 4,500 feet this morning. So if you are sitting at that level, keep in mind, you may be seeing a wintry um, mix as you're heading out the door this morning. But the system continuing to move out of the southwest as low pressure moves into the region. We are seeing some areas of a little bit of instability, so a chance of a lightning strike is possible this morning. A little thunder already being forecast in the lower Treasure Valley. But with this system's orientation because of the Owyhees, we are seeing a rain shadow effect. So some areas of the lower Treasure Valley may be staying dry today while others getting some of those wet raindrops. So just keep that in mind again. Uh, this is a look up at Tamarack, though you can't see much. We are getting snow falling up again above that 4,500 foot mark. Some good news for our skiers and snowboarders. A look at our next weather maker. We don't have any weather advisories for us here in our forecast area, but keep in mind if you are on the eastern side, that's a look at what you can expect. Precipitation over the next 12 hours after that front moves through again over the next two hours, two to three hours, right in time for our commute. We're going to see that taper off and hopefully see a little more sunshine for the day, but it is windy out there as that front is pushing through. So again, two hands on the wheel. That's what we want this morning and our live cameras out there. Yeah, kind of just shaking around. <laughs> so yeah, again, two hands on the wheel today. Again, remember that rain jacket. It's going, we're going to see clearing, but again, that's what we're looking at for your morning commute. <laughs> yes, just looking at some of the cameras looking like a windy morning out there, like Sarah mentioned. Yep, just be ready. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bringing team traffic all morning long. And let's take a live look out there. And as we're looking at the cameras, let's go ahead and send it out to Ron O'Brien in our News Talk Traffic Center for a look at this morning's conditions. Good morning, Ron. Well, good morning. Uh, already one issue, and it may have been the result of some puddling water. Single vehicle that spun out and hit the barrier on the left side. You can see it in the lower right-hand corner, ID4 and Orchard in that shot. And that is uh, looking towards the airport, heading east. ID4, you come around that curve after the Orchard on-ramp at 52 interchange. And uh, police at least on scene, if not uh, uh, other emergency crews. No big backup or anything, as you can see, because traffic's light. But already that one incident, so use some caution this morning. And uh, traffic is running pretty light elsewhere to start off a Monday. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. And as he mentioned, you can see in that I-84 Orchard camera, the roads are wet and the camera's shaking, so there's some wind out there. Leave a little bit extra this early. Leave, leave a little early this morning. I need more coffee. Give yourself some extra time to get where you're going. And... If you're getting your cup of coffee and heading out the door, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Two road closures in CUNA to keep in mind this morning. ACHD says Lake Hazel Road will be closed from Black Cat Road to 10 Mile Road. 
This closure is expected to last through November 23rd, and Linder Road will be closed between Columbia Road and Hubbard Road. This closure expected to last through November 28th, so keep that in mind if you're heading through there. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, wet weather making its way across the world. How many homes are destroyed in Colombia after hours of heavy rain causes mudslides? Plus, get ready to look at the stars when you can catch the last lunar eclipse until 2025. And it's time now for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at Friday's question. 45% of people say this has been the most stressful event in their life. That answer was moving definitely can be stressful. Now for today's question, a study shows this food is eaten the most between 9 and 11 p.m. What is it? Happy Monday, folks. It is 615 Ontario today, a high of 50 degrees. We are looking at morning rain with windy conditions, but clearing behind it overnight tonight, 31 degrees. It's going to be cold with partly cloudy skies tomorrow evening rain with a high of 47. Thank you, Sarah. Heavy rains in northern Columbia over the weekend, causing landslides, destroying at least 70 houses. 82 families are evacuating from the disaster site. The rain also destroying several graves in the local cemetery. The houses collapsed after storms lasted more than 24 hours. And major outages across Nahomish County, Washington, are leaving tens of thousands without power and in the cold. A storm knocked out power on Friday, and officials say it may still be a few days before the lights come back on. As of this morning, nearly 37,000 homes are still in the dark, and our Sinclair sister station in Washington reports they're still working to get power back on for about 12 schools. And we're seeing snow come down here in our higher elevations. Take a look at this. Snow is covering Ridge to Rivers trails after wet weather made its way here last week. For a full photo gallery, you can head to IdahoNews.com. And with wet weather coming our way to our hiking trails, here's something to keep in mind. Watch out for mud in the foothills. Ridge to Rivers says trails with darker soil like Table Rock, Polecat Loop, Heroes, Hidden Springs, and more are to be avoided to prevent erosion and trail damage. But there are some all-weather trails to use, like in Lower Holes Gulch, the Lower Military Reserve, Chief Eagle Eye Reserve, and Harrison Hollow. We've got a full list of trails to avoid and use on our website, IdahoNews.com. And tomorrow will be the last chance to see a total lunar eclipse until 2025. But you'll have to get up pr pretty early to catch it. You'll be able to see the moon eclipse across the U.S. from about 3.16 a.m. to 4.41 a.m. our time. The moon will have a reddish-brown look from the light of Earth's sunsets and sunrises. You can also watch a live stream through the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. And if you don't see it, don't worry, there will still be plenty of partial lunar eclipses before 2025. So cool. I was going to say, especially with the blood moon, being able to see kind of that coppery red. Yes. Oh, one of my favorites. Of Sarah and I will be outside the station tomorrow <laughs> just, morning just watching. <laughs> trying to, you know, track the clouds. Well, the good news is it does look like there is a good chance of us being able to see it, especially us here in the Pacific Northwest. So make sure you call your friends in the area. Let them know. <laughs> At least tomorrow night, partly cloudy skies. Mm -hmm. So you may be dodging a cloud here or there, but we'll keep that forecast. Um, I'll have that on my Facebook page if you guys want to look at it. But right now outside, we are tracking a cold front. We do have active weather as you're waking up this morning. It is just rain and some breezy conditions pushing through, but it is keeping our snow levels high this morning. So 4,500 feet is the snow levels. We are seeing snow falling up at our mountain resorts, but just rain here in the I-84 corridor. Again, if you are traveling anywhere to our mountain, um, our mountainous areas, just keep in mind you will have wet and slick roads here in the Treasure Valley, though. It is going to be wet. The one thing that may be in your way is the Owyhees. We do have some of that rain shadow effect 
for the lower Treasure Valley this morning, as well as some areas where we are seeing some instability, a chance for thunder and a lightning strike possible this morning, though it is still looking pretty low, folks. Just grab your rain jacket as you're heading out the door, all because of this low pressure center continuing to push into the inland northwest. That's what's bringing it out of the southwest, all of our um, all of our wet weather. So again, those Hawaii's keeping that in mind. We did see a lightning strike over there just north of the Twin Falls area. So just keep that in mind for your morning. You want to make sure you're grabbing that rain jacket, being aware of what's happening. As far as snowfall, McCall looking at less than half an inch, 1.5 for Stanley, though we could see up to three inches for our friends in the Sun Valley area. After that cold front pushes through, we are going to see tapering off of any precipitation. Our next system, not until late Tuesday night into Wednesday. As we were saying, you can still see the moon tomorrow, or at least tonight into tomorrow morning. Here's a look at our chances. Again, that heavy rain pushing through the 6 a.m. hour, 7 a.m. hour for us here in the Treasure Valley. We will see clearing behind it, but if you are on the eastern side of the state, you are still going to be encountering some of that snow. So seven day forecast for you, 49 degrees for your high today, though you wouldn't believe it as you're stepping out the door this morning. Just keep in mind it is windy out there, folks, and look at those overnight lows, colder air pushing in as well. Luckily, we'll see some more sunshine. Yes, like week. like Sarah mentioned, windy. You can yeah. see some of our traffic cams are moving, so just some important things to remember as you head on out the door. Yep, two hands on the wheel kind of day. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bringing team traffic all morning long. And let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. And Ron, we've heard of reports of a crash on I-84 in Orchard. How is it looking out there? We do have that uh, single vehicle crash. Uh, it's uh, ID4, lower right hand uh, corner of for the uh, live shot, uh, looking east away from the Orchard 52 interchange. You can see not really any delay. At times, there's been a little bit of slowing as you come around that corner, but not much. The uh, crash, uh, just as you're coming around the curve there beyond Orchard, crews were blocking the left lane for a while, may have just the left shoulder block now, but something to be aware of and uh, be aware that the uh, Puddling water could be an issue this morning. That was a single vehicle crash that uh, vehicle that hit the uh, barrier after spinning out. So kind of watch out this morning. Traffic elsewhere is running light. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Thank you, Ron. And yes, definitely some important things to remember. Rain is coming down. Our roads are wet and it's very windy out there. So leave a little early this morning. Give yourself a couple extra minutes to get to your destination. And when you do get in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, if the election has you stressed out, don't worry, you're not alone. Some ways to help you control election stress disorder. Plus, treating long COVID, the medicine already treating the virus that may help with its after effects. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. The midterm elections are here and many Americans are reporting significant related stress. Bradley Blackburn has more on what some experts refer to as election stress disorder. In this current political climate, so many are feeling anxious about Election Day. It's more divisive. We live in turbulent times. I'm nervous about the democracy in our country. Some experts refer to it as election stress disorder. Mayo Clinic psychiatrist Dr. Robert Bright says it's not an actual medical diagnosis, but experiencing higher levels of stress and anxiety during election cycles can be real for some. Difficulty getting to sleep or waking up early and not being able to let go of, of that. Um, for some people, they experience it physically. They may have GI upset or headaches or just feel shaky. Not be able to relax, not be able to concentrate. A recent survey from the American Psychological Association shows two thirds of adults say the current political climate is a significant source of stress in their lives. More than three quarters are stressed about the future of our nation. Social media, as well as media in general, can really generate stress and anxiety around the election. So for some people, they're really focused all the time in a very concentrated way on news story and news events and living moment to moment of what's going to happen next. Dr. Bright says election stress also comes from the feeling of not being in control. That's why it's important to control what you can. Make sure you're getting enough sleep and exercise. Do some relaxation techniques and connect with friends and loved ones that support you. I'm going to vote. I'll pick somebody. I'm not stressed about it. How do you stay so calm? I just try to focus on the important parts of life. And Dr. Bright says another thing in your control, casting your vote on election day. 
Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Well, a new study offers some hope for a treatment of long COVID. A VA health system study showed Paxlovid, which is already used to reduce the risk of death and hospitalization from COVID-19, also seems to reduce the risk of long COVID. A study of 9,000 veterans who took Paxlovid within the first five days of their coronavirus infection showed a 26% reduced risk of developing several long COVID symptoms. Now, these include heart disease, blood disorders, fatigue, muscle pain, and shortness of breath, among others. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Powerball's largest jackpot ever. How much is up for grabs after another night of no winners? And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2 News. Of course, after all your favorite, join us right back here at 10 p.m. for CBS 2 News. And don't forget our question of the day. A study shows this food is eaten the most between 9 and 11 p.m. What is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, tomorrow is Election Day. An early voting push already has Republicans in some states at an early lead, while some Democrats are pointing fingers at their own party. Plus, concerns ahead of midterms, why officials are worried about the impact it may have even after the voting is over. Plus, keeping kids warm this winter, what you can do to help families in need get through the cold season. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Hey folks, happy Monday. It is 6.30 a.m. and we are tracking a cold front pushing through southwestern Idaho already ricocheted through eastern Oregon. It's bringing gusty conditions for your morning commute and rain if you're traveling through the Treasure Valley. If you are above the 4500 foot mark, you could be seeing snow falling this morning. Anywhere in between there could be seeing a wintry mix and slick roads out there this morning. Right now in Boise, it is 40 degrees. We are seeing that rain continuing to fall as winds are out of the west at 17 miles an hour. We have clocked a wind gust at 35 miles an hour in the Caldwell area already this morning. So again, if you are heading out, be ready for some breezy conditions. We are looking at 42 degrees by 9 a.m. Those scattered showers pushing through with the cold front that is expected to move out by about 10 a.m. Our time. We're looking at highs today in the mid to upper 40s for your Monday. We're going to see a little bit of clearing behind that front pushing through with partly cloudy skies as we head into your afternoon. So here's a look at our satellite and radar right now. This uh, front moving through out of the southwest. So if you are in the the lower Treasure Valley. We are seeing the rain shadow effect, of course, from the Owyhees due to the orientation of this system. So you may not be waking up to raindrops depending on where you live, but be ready and have a rain jacket ready if you are going to be heading out this morning. Our adventure cast today, a high of 47 degrees, that scattered rain pushing to partly cloudy skies and then colder air moving in behind it with an overnight low of 30 degrees, though we are going to see partly cloudy skies for your Tuesday, a high of 46. And we'll talk a little more about this front, the timing and what we can expect for our mountain ski resorts. It's looking good. All that coming up in just a few minutes. Ashley. Thank you, Sarah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And like Sarah mentioned, we're starting to get some rain out there. You can see our roads are wet. Some of those cameras are shaking from the wind that Sarah mentioned. And we are starting to see some more cars out on the road. So leave a little extra early this morning. Give yourself some time to get to your destination. And just be cautious of those wet roads. And you can see we do have some you know, follow those speed laws, be cautious, get to your destination safely. And when you do get in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Many of the polls ahead of Tuesday's midterm election show tight races and no definitive answers on who will be in the majority in the House or Senate. But the momentum these last few weeks has been largely with the Republicans, which has prompted some Democrats to to start already pointing game, pointing blame at their own party. As national correspondent Christine Frizzow reports, they're largely pointing fingers at those inside their own party. <laughs> With early voting now wrapped up in many parts of the country, a quiet calm before what many Democrats predict will be a savage storm. I am not happy. I just think that we are 
you know, we did not listen to voters in this election. And I think we're going to have a bad night. While polls show tight races for several swing state Senate seats, they were races dominated by Democrats until a few months ago. A new ABC News Washington Post poll revealing top issues for likely voters could help Republicans trusted to handle the economy, inflation and crime by double digit margins. We're getting crushed on narrative. We're going to have to do better. Democrats time and time again blaming not what has been done, but what's been said and not said by fellow Democrats. They became inflation deniers, and, and that really, I think, is a stupid strategy. Even President Biden, a target of blame for these comments he made on coal. We're going to be shutting these plants down all across America and having wind and solar. West Virginia Democrat Joe Manchin responding in a press release that President Biden's comments ignore the severe economic pain the American people are feeling because of rising energy costs. But some Democrats are expressing optimism, not only about their party's accomplishments, but also its messaging on issues they say matter most. I know what their closing argument is, is that when this country is going through tough times, whether it's a pandemic or inflation rising, who is really going to have your family's back? Others hoping the issues they have campaigned on, like abortion rights and defending America's democracy, will resonate. We're not perfect, but we are responsible adults who didn't attack the Capitol on January 6th, didn't try to whitewash it. Don't pretend we're for, we're for law enforcement and then ignore 140 cops getting beat up on that horrible day. The focus now on election day. Many Democrats already rethinking their political strategy for the future. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. And threats to election officials and political violence remain a concern heading into tomorrow. A federal intelligence bulletin recently warned that domestic violent extremists across ideological spectrum pose a heightened threat to the midterms and beyond election day though there are currently no specific threats. And here in Ada County, Election Day polling locations are open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. tomorrow. And if you requested an absentee ballot, be sure to return it by 8 p.m. on Election Day. Now remember, most Ada County voters were assigned to a new voting precinct at the beginning of the year following statewide redistricting. If you want to find your polling location or preview your ballot, you can head to the Ada County Elections website we have a link to that on IdahoNews.com. And Zoo Boise is dropping their admission prices for the fall and winter seasons. Daily admission is now $9 for people between the ages of 12 and 61. Between the ages of 3 and 11 and seniors over the age of 62 cost $6. Children 2 and under are free. And for some of those upcoming events at the zoo, you can find a list on IdahoNews.com. And Intermountain Gas Company, the Idaho Steelheads, and Baird's Dry Cleaners are teaming up once again this year to help keep kids warm. They're hosting a coat drive and taking donations for energy assistance. The Keep Kids Warm Fund helps low-income families pay for their heating costs. Now, there are several ways to help make an impact. People can donate coats at the Idaho Steelheads ticket office or any of the four Baird's Boise locations. Intermountain Gas Company customers can also pledge each month to make a donation with their gas bill or make a one-time donation. To learn more about the drive, you can head to IdahoNews.com. And just in time as we are seeing cold air moving in, it's not here yet, but later this week, the mountains may be seeing even single-digit overnight lows. So, yeah, that no, is, it's that time of the year, guys. We want to be ready for it. Quickly and, approaching. Yes, quickly approaching, just like this cold front that's moving through this morning. That's what's, of course, causing all the breezy conditions and the rain out the door this morning. We do have snow levels sitting high at 4,500 feet. Here's a look at your forecast for this morning. 40 degrees, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 41, and we're keeping it there at 8 a.m. Let's take a look at our satellite and radar. We do have a pretty strong pocket of rain pushing through the downtown Boise area as we speak. Keep in mind there is a chance with some thunder from these systems, even a strike of lightning that's not out of the ordinary for this time of the year. But we do want to keep in mind the lower Treasure Valley is seeing some rain shadow effect 
because of our Owyhee Mountains. So some areas this morning you may not be seeing any rain out your door, but be ready because you are going to see, be impacted if you are heading down I-84 this morning. This is a live look up at Tamarack, seeing quite a bit of patchy fog for our northern mountain communities. Snow is falling this morning, so be ready for slick roads as well as possibly some slick and icy wet roads if you are heading down to about the 4,000 foot mark for elevation. So our next weather maker, we are looking good. We're going to be clear after this cold front pushes through. If you are traveling to the eastern side of the state, this is the stuff you need to keep in mind. We do have snow levels hitting our valley floors for the Sun Valley area overnight tonight. And after that cold front pushes through, we are going to see, of course, that precipitation taper off very quickly to partly cloudy skies. So may even see some sunshine today. Here's a look at your day part forecast. We are looking at highs today in the mid to upper 40s. Different story right now, of course, as that wind is blowing out there. So just be ready, grab your rain jacket and make sure you have two hands on the wheel. Some very important things to remember this morning. As you can see, some of yeah. our camera shots are shaking and the oh, yeah. roads are very wet. So thank you, Sarah. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. And it is a wet start to our morning. Let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center to see how it's looking out there for our commuters. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. Single vehicle accident earlier. Vehicle has spun out and hit the barrier on the left side and that uh, curve beyond Orchard. You can see a police vehicle there on the left shoulder of ID4 and the accident actually happened up around the corner from that point. Last check waiting for a tow truck. No delays on that, but just an example of uh, you got to be careful a little bit. That could have been the result of some standing water as that vehicle spun out and hit the barrier. Uh, volume a little on the increase elsewhere, but nothing big going. But do be careful this morning, of course. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bland. Thank you, Ron. Definitely some important things to remember. As you can see, the roads are wet. The wind is strong out there and we are starting to see some more cars. So just leave a little early this morning. Give yourself some extra time. And when you get in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And now it's time for our question of the day. That question is a study shows this food is eaten the most between 9 and 11 PM. Popcorn. Sarah? It has to be popcorn. <laughs> yeah. I know I'm thinking that was my first <laughs> guess. I'm it's a toss up for me between popcorn and ice cream. Just, just mix from, them together. Yeah, you know. I'm just kidding. Just do not personal do experience. <laughs> those are what I tend to crave during those hours. All right, let's see what the folks at home have to say. All right, Vernon says pizza. Mm. Oh, pizza good at any time of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, guilty pleasure pizza for breakfast. Oh yeah, no, we <laughs> we love cold pizza for breakfast, guys. Got to get what you can while you have it. Gail says potato chips. Oh, another delicious. Yeah, it's like snack. sweet, salty. Yeah, mm, love that. Oh, yep, Wes, cookies and milk. Oh, <laughs> making me hungry at this 6:40 a.m. hour. No, I love it. Oh gosh, all right. Well, I guess uh, we still have about 15 minutes to get those answers in, or, yes. a, a, or at least guesses. Let's yeah. put it that way. <laughs> yep, we would love to hear your guesses on our Facebook or our Twitter. We'll read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal that answer at the end of the show, right before CBS this morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, inflation may make shopping this holiday season tough. A look at some of the best discounts and deals coming this month. Welcome back. It is 644 Mountain Home. You are looking today at morning rain pushing through a high of 45 degrees today. We will see clearing tonight. There is a chance of a wintry mix overnight lows just 30 degrees and tomorrow we are looking at some evening rain a high of 46. Thank you, Sarah. Rental hunting in Boise seeing relief over October. According to apartmentlist.com, Boise had the number one rental cost decline month to month falling 3.5% from September. They report the median rent for a Boise one-bedroom is $1,118, and a two-bedroom is costing a bit over $1,300. Apartment list shows October as the city's fourth straight month of decline. Boise's two-bedroom median cost is just under the national median at about $1,350. And if you're shocked by price tags on nearly everything recently, don't worry, you aren't alone. Consumer Reports found deals on some of its top tested items to help kickstart your holiday shopping season and save you some money. CBS 2's Seth Chilcutt reports. If you like discounts, 
then your favorite month of the year should be November. From TVs to vacuum cleaners to coffee makers, there are deals across the board this month, just in time for the holiday shopping madness. Consumer Reports tracks the prices of many of its top-tested products all year long, so it knows exactly when they go on deep discount. Here are some top products to look out for in this month's best time to buy. Tech products are going to be at their deepest discounts on Thanksgiving, but if you're looking for a TV, wait until Black Friday when they'll see their biggest deals. And keep in mind that sale prices will be fluctuating all month long, so if you see a good deal, grab it. This Samsung OLED 4K UHD TV is Consumer Reports' top-rated 65-inch TV and is currently on sale for $1,997.99 at ABT Electronics and Amazon. Consumer Reports says this 4K OLED Smart TV is one of the best it's ever tested. Next, surprise a coffee lover with a better coffee house style brew. This Ninja Specialty Coffee Maker is a Consumer Reports recommended model and is currently $169.99 at Amazon and Best Buy. And even if it's cold outside, you can heat things up with a wood-fired outdoor pizza oven. The Geiber Fremont 29-inch wood-fired pizza oven is now on sale for $2.54 at Lowe's. Consumer Reports says this wood pellet heated outdoor pizza oven holds a slightly larger pizza of about 13 inches than the other wood-fired options. If certain types of earbuds are breaking the budget this year, Consumer Reports says you can find others offering great sound quality for a fraction of the price. These Audio-Technica wireless earbuds are a Consumer Report Best Buy and are currently $79 at Amazon. And finally, if you plan on hosting for the holidays, save big now on keeping your home clean. The Eufy 11S Vacuum Cleaner is a Consumer Reports Best Buy and is now $149.99 at Amazon. Consumer Reports says this affordable RoboVac was great at navigating its specially designed test area, and the Eufy is also one of the quieter models it's tested. Saving money goes a long way in helping have a stress-free holiday. For CBS 2's Consumer Reports, I'm Seth Cholkut. Well, if you're thinking about buying the new iPhone 14 for the holidays, you could be waiting longer than usual to get it. Apple says a COVID-19 outbreak at a factory in China has impacted production, which will lead to lower shipments than anticipated. The company says it is working to return to normal production levels at the facility, while also protecting the safety of every worker. And just days after Twitter began mass layoffs, the Wall Street Journal reports Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, is also planning large-scale layoffs as soon as this week. The layoffs could affect thousands of jobs and would be the first large-scale reduction in the company's 18-year history. A company spokesperson refused to comment on the report, but pointed to founder Mark Zuckerberg's recent comments that some teams will grow while others would either, quote, stay flat or shrink in the next year. And Powerball's largest ever jackpot just keeps growing ahead of today's drawing. It's close to an estimated $2 billion after there was no winning ticket Saturday night. And that is $2 billion with a B. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yep, yeah, you know the rules. You can't win if you don't play, guys. We'll have to go buy your tickets after the show, but we'll need a jacket. Yes, definitely. Leave. Grab that jacket if you're heading out the door this morning. Let's take a live look out there. We are seeing snow falling above the 4,500 foot mark. So again, if you are in our northern mountain zones, Keep that in mind. You are expecting slick roads here down in the Treasure Valley, though. We are seeing some pooling on our roadways. Again, that's what's why we're seeing some traffic crashes. We'll get to that in a moment. Give yourself some time as you're heading out this morning. This is a look at our satellite and radar right now. The system moving out of the southwest. We are seeing some rain shadow effect along the Owyhees for our friends in the lower Treasure Valley. So again, if you're waking up without raindrops, it's OK. That's because of the Owyhees. But some areas, again, seeing some pretty heavy rain coming down right now in the downtown Boise area heading toward the Mountain Home area. Again, you do want to remember that rain jacket as you're heading out this morning. Of course, it will continue through about 10 a.m. this morning, and then we'll start to see some tapering off, all because of this low pressure system right there off the coast, continuing to just churn in that moisture to the Pacific Northwest. Again, out of the Southwest, bringing a little bit warmer temperatures, so snow levels are staying high. As far as this next weather maker, we are looking good. Um, a chance for about a half of an inch up in the McCall area. We could see up to two inches in Sun Valley, about an inch for our friends 
in Stanley, but us here in Boise just seeing rain. So that rain will taper off into the afternoon. Again, we have another system pushing through late Tuesday into Wednesday. After that, the cold air begins to make its way in to our region. So again, you're going to be dodging raindrops this morning and it will be breezy with that frontal passage clearing behind it. If you are heading to the eastern side of the state, though, you can see some impacts of snow continuing to fall today. So just keep that in mind. Our next system pushing in for late Tuesday into Wednesday. So let's take a peek at that seven day forecast for you. Again, those overnight lows. I just want to note as we head further through the week, cold air is going to push in getting to single digits for our friends up in the mountains. So just prepare ahead for that. As far as this morning, yeah, don't forget that rain jacket. It is wet and it is windy out there as that cold front is passing. Yes, and with that time change over the weekend, it will get oh. lighter a bit earlier, yes. but something to keep in mind is that rain and wind as Sarah has been mentioning. No, definitely hope you all are a little bit. I got a little extra sleep. <laughs> Those with pets and babies, maybe not so much, but yeah, feeling a little bit more rejuvenated, getting ready for yeah, kind of an inclement start to your Monday. Definitely. Thank you, Sarah. Well, CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long and let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. And Ron, how is it looking out there this morning? We've got the rain coming down. We've had uh, some slow traffic a little bit. Merge areas in Meridian trying to busy up. That can all fluctuate, though, of course, depending on how much traffic's coming onto the freeway at any given time. Earlier, single vehicle crash taken care of in that uh, curve beyond Orchard, ID4 eastbound. Do be careful uh, with the standing water. That could be an issue this morning. That uh, crash earlier may have been uh, in part due to some standing water. So uh, something to keep in mind this morning. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. And yes, like he mentioned, be cautious of that standing water. Be cautious in general of our roads that are wet and that wind that Sarah's been mentioning. Maybe leave a few extra minutes early this morning. Give yourself some extra time. And when you do get in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Boise State loses to BYU over the weekend. A look at where they're headed next and when you can head to their next home game. Leaders in Learning is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Eric Olson, a teacher at Idaho Technical Career Academy, recently created a board game to bring students together, and now it's getting nationwide attention. Take a look. Eric wanted to encourage his own kids to set aside their devices, so he created the first version of Glyphix with random obje objects in his kitchen. That game is now available at Target and soon to be on Amazon. Olson hopes the game makes it into Idaho classrooms and he tells CBS2 that he's looking forward to seeing how educators might utilize the game in a classroom setting. If you want to learn more about Olson or how to get your hands on the board game, head to our website and click on the Leaders in Learning tab. And Boise State defeated by BYU over the weekend. The Cougars defeated the Broncos by a score of 31-28. to it was a back and forth battle all night long with the ruckus crowd at Albertson Stadium. Boise State now heads to Nevada for their game against the Wolfpack. That will be at 8.30 this Saturday. It airs on the CBS Sports Network and the next home game will be the day after Thanksgiving. And it's time now for our question of the day. Yeah, that question is a study shows this food is eaten the most between 9 and 11 p.m. The answer? Ice cream delicious <laughs> treat. Thank you for joining us. Our next newscast is at 11. We'll see you then. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.